What's up guys, so I'm going to do a quick follow up video on the 1978 Ford F-350 Firestone Edition from AMT. So I did a video earlier uh, talking about some of the negative comments about this kit, how difficult it is to build, so on and so forth. Uh, I'm an amateur builder, I've only built three, you can actually see all three of them here. Uh, and I can tell you, uh, I didn't find any issues with this kit at all. Uh, there were issues with panel lines not matching up and uh, people just having issue after issue getting parts to go together, especially the drive shafts. Um, like I said, I didn't have any issues with that. Now, I'll tell you part of the problem is definitely due to the instruction sheet. So this instruction sheet uh, from AMT is not very comprehensive. It is a single sheet. Uh, it is not very useful, it's not very detailed, and you have to pay very, very close attention to some uh, parts of the frame that must be removed in order to uh, assemble this kit. You can actually see the little tabs here. If you do not remove these, that is what's causing all the issues on this kit. So you do have to pay attention. Uh, as long as you remove those, you're not really going to have any issues putting this truck together. So. Um, and I was actually even able to pretty easily modify this kit. Uh, but all of the drive shafts go right where they need to. I did not use the uh, engine that came with the kit, but I did use the transmission and the transmission mounting points. So that's not going to be a contributor to it. Uh, I think most likely it was probably just uh, a lack of attention to put the kit together. But, uh, went together really really well it was actually a, a pretty fun build i did take some of my own spin on this truck it came with a very small i think a 289 something like that um i went ahead and did something a lot of truck guys won't like i put a 426 hemi in it uh, like i said it was really easy to modify uh, very easy to put together there are a lot of parts under the engine that didn't come with the kit so just ignore that all together but um uh, uh, like I said, you know, it's it was very very easy to assemble no issues The only issue I did have with it, which is kind of crazy The frame is not long enough to mount the rear bumper and I don't know how this happened but uh, I ended up having to cut up pieces of the tree and uh, Mount those to have something to mount the rear bumper on that was the only issue that I ran into. Everything else uh, was pretty easy to do. Uh, and it's not just that, this kit's actually really detailed, especially some of the interior. I don't know if you can really see that or not. The dash is very, very detailed. Uh, and it was overall uh, pretty, pretty fun to put together. So I would recommend buying it. It is more expensive than most kits, which I thought was a little odd. It's definitely an older mold. And I do recommend this kit for somebody that's maybe a little bit more experienced than I am. Uh, mainly because a lot of the parts uh, are all one piece, like this front grill. So you have to be very careful where paint goes in order for things to look uh, correct. But um, other than that, I didn't see any real issues with the kit. And I did take some uh, kind of custom liberties on the inside. For those of you that are just starting to build models like I am, like I said, I've just built these three. I did save all of the parts and all of the decals and everything from the other kits that weren't used. And that's how I was able to put this detail into this truck. So just some tips for people starting out. Uh, save everything. You can use it later. This uh, chassis brace was actually from the charger. The 426 was an optional engine for the Charger. Um, a lot of the piping and everything came from the Shelby. Uh, and then some of these parts didn't come with the kit at all. I didn't have them, so I had to make them. So the brake booster is actually two brake discs and a starter. But looks just like a brake booster. Um, I made additional parts from the tree itself uh, by melting them down and molding them. Uh, such as these little guys here, kind of like strut tower uh, points. Um, and then I used heavy duty industrial thread and a small hand drill to 
uh, drill out the valve covers and place the spark plugs and spark plug wires. Um, so they're all there and represented. Uh, the wiring harnesses running throughout the truck. Sorry, I'm having a difficult time having this uh, old iPhone focus. But uh, those were all just uh, regular household thread uh, glued into place. And just doing a lot of referencing from the uh, original truck pictures and uh, how the Hemi is actually wired from the factory. So other than that, it was a cool little deal. Um, and then I also used the hooker headers from the uh, kit from the Dodge. So, and it all fit pretty well. I did have to cut out a couple of um, cross members in order to be able to drop that Hemi in. But really, really simple. Not a whole lot to this. Um, the wheels are on uh, axles, so they do roll. Um, but they also have a tendency to fall off, so, uh, just, uh, but that's about it. It was a good kit. Uh, I didn't find any problems with it. So, ignore the negative vibes on it. Uh, just make sure you pay attention when you're doing your assembly, and it should come together fine. Thanks a lot, guys.